In this video, I will walk you through free response question number six from the 2022 AP Calculus exam. This problem is primarily about position, velocity, and acceleration. Particle P moves along the x-axis such that for time t greater than zero, its position is given by xp of t equals 6 minus 4e to the negative t power. Particle Q moves along the y-axis such that for time t greater than zero, its velocity is given by vq of t equals 1 over t squared. At time t equals 1, the position of particle Q is yq at 1 equals 2. Part A. Find vp of t, the velocity of particle p, at time t. So we are given the position function, and we are being asked to find the velocity function. But we know that velocity is the derivative of position. The derivative of 6 is 0, so we write nothing. We bring down the negative 4. The derivative of e to the something is e to the something. However, the chain rule demands that we multiply by the derivative of this inner function, which is negative 1. That negative 1 will cancel out this negative. So we have positive 4 e to the negative t power. Make sure you record your answer like this. Write vp of t equals xp prime of t, which equals 4 e to the negative t power. You must write vp of t because that's what they were asking us to find, but you must write xp prime of t because that connects us back to the position function, which is what we were given. You could also write your answer like this. Part B. Find aq of t, the acceleration of particle q at time t. Find all times t for t greater than zero when the speed of particle q is decreasing. Justify your answer. So they gave us the velocity function, and they are asking us to find the acceleration function. But we know that acceleration is the derivative of velocity. So aq of t equals vq prime of t, and that is negative 2 t to the negative 3 power. Make sure you mention aq of t and vq of t in your answer like this. You need aq of t because that's what they asked you to find, but you must include vq of t because that refers back to the equation that we were given. So that's the answer to the first half of the question, but we still need to find all times t for t greater than zero when the speed of particle q is decreasing. We know that the speed is decreasing when velocity and acceleration have opposite signs. The velocity of particle q is given by 1 over t squared. Notice that this is always positive for t greater than zero. We just found that the acceleration of particle q is given by negative 2 over t cubed. Notice that this expression will be negative for all t greater than zero because we have a negative divided by a positive, which is a negative. In summary, the speed of particle q is decreasing for t greater than zero because velocity and acceleration have opposite signs. Part C. Find yq of t, the position of particle q at time t. I'm going to show you two different ways to solve this problem. Method one is to find c. They gave us the equation of the velocity of particle q. We can go from velocity to position by integrating. Let's integrate both sides of the equation. The antiderivative of velocity is position, and the antiderivative of t to the negative 2 power is negative t to the negative 1 power, plus c. Don't forget the constant of integration. We can use this initial condition to find the value of c. If we plug in 1 for t, we should get 2 for the answer. So we have negative 1 over 1 plus c equals 2. Of course, this is just negative 1. 
So adding 1 to both sides, we get C is equal to 3. Plugging 3 back in for C, we have the position of particle Q equals negative 1 over T plus 3. Method 2 is to find the position function using the first fundamental theorem of calculus. The first fundamental theorem of calculus says that f at b will equal f at a plus the integral of f prime from a to b. Rewriting in terms of position and velocity, we have the position at b will equal the position at a plus the integral of velocity from a to b. Instead of the position at b, let's call it the position at any time t. Instead of the position at a, let's use the initial condition we were given. So the position at 1. In that case, the integral from a to b becomes the integral from 1 to t. Next, we have the integral of velocity. Let's substitute in the formula for velocity, which is t to the negative 2 power. When you do an integral defined function, you are not supposed to use the same variable in the limit of integration and the inner function. So instead of t to the negative 2 power, I'm just going to pick a different variable. I'm going to pick x to the negative 2 power. We know that yq at 1 is 2. So let's go ahead and substitute that value in. The antiderivative of x to the negative 2 power is negative 1x to the negative 1 power. Then we must apply the limits of integration from 1 to t. The limits of integration are here to remind me that I need to find the value at t minus the value at 1. So the value at t will be negative t to the negative 1 power. And now the value at 1 will be negative 1 to the negative 1 power. 1 to the negative 1 power is still 1. Minus negative 1 is plus 1. So now we have this. Combining like terms gives us this. Of course, we get the same position function that we got from the first method. Part D. As t approaches infinity, which particle will eventually be farther from the origin? Give a reason for your answer. When we talk about how far a particle is from the origin, we are talking about the position of the particle. So our strategy will be to compare position functions as t approaches infinity. Remember, we were given the position function for particle p in the setup of the problem. So let's write that down in our work. In part c, we just found the equation for the position of particle q. Let's record that as well. So here we have the position of particle p and the position of particle q. To compare what happens as t approaches infinity, we need to find the limit of each function as t approaches infinity. As t approaches infinity, this denominator gets bigger and bigger and bigger, so the value of this fraction gets closer and closer to zero. So that leaves 6 minus zero, which equals 6. So as t approaches infinity, the position of particle p approaches 6. Similarly, as t approaches infinity, this denominator gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So this fraction gets closer and closer to 0, leaving only positive 3. So as t approaches infinity, the position of particle q approaches 3. So as t approaches infinity, particle p will eventually be farther from the origin.